channel. My name is Emily. You are at the home of the Forever Theater Kid. This is your one-stop shop for all things performance, advice, what it's like to be a performer, musical theater, cruise ship, life. You're here. You're home. I hope that you'll subscribe and I hope that you'll stay because we have a lot of fun here and we throw shade and we are cool with it. Today we're going to talk about audition etiquette and what not to do in an audition room. Because I see these mistakes happen time and time again. I make them myself. Words of the wise, don't be an asshole in auditions. It's hard for everybody. Don't be an ass. Well, I've wanted to film this for a little bit of time now. Reach out to all you on Instagram. So if you're not following me on Instagram, I will link it here and it will be down below. Make sure you go check her out. She's cute. Yeah, I went to Instagram yesterday and I was like, y'all, tell me what you feel people need to know about audition etiquette. And I had a couple of you reach out and tell me things that I was like, yup, yup, yup. Not all of these are from Instagram. Some of them are from my own brain. First and foremost, we are going to start with the unofficial non-union lists. Friends, we know it's a struggle. We know it's a struggle. We know we get up very, very early to get there, to get to Pearl, to get to Ripley, to get to Noah. Places where we need to sign in in the morning. Sometimes at 5.30 or earlier, what is our life? We go to sign up. It's a wonderful feeling when maybe there's only five people on the list so far and you've like, all right, I woke up early and I made it. But some little hunty gets there before you and you go, oh yeah, you were here first, go on. And um, she decides to sign up five or more of her friends. Karen, 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 Karen. Don't do that. Rude. Oh my gosh. Okay, I get it if you've got like one friend to sign up because maybe she's signing you up in another place. I get the strategy. I understand. I've done it myself. I don't think there's anything wrong with signing up a friend. But don't create a whole freaking list because you are the one who drew the bad straw to get your ass up early. It is so infuriating. I've had it once where I let a girl go in front of me out of the kindness of my own heart. She signs in like four of her friends and guess what? The non-neck list got cut right before me. It happens. I don't know. They weren't seeing many of us so maybe they were seeing like 15 and I was number 16 and Karen, Karen, and Karen were right in front of me and they weren't even there to sign up. So infuriating, don't do it. Oh, and if you're gonna transfer the list, thank you out of the kindness of your own heart. That's very nice, it's a big responsibility. You wanna make sure you get everybody's name and that you do it right. Uh, make sure that you got good handwriting though. If you don't have good handwriting, take a seat. Take a seat, Take the, sit this one out. It doesn't have to be you. Know your strengths, know your weaknesses. And if it's your handwriting, don't write that list. Uh, when you go to an ECC call or an EPA call, or basically any call, because I believe there's always a moderator present, shut up when they are speaking. It's not hard. I get it. You see your friends, and we all feel like the entire world needs to know when some of our friends are in the audition room. I've been there myself, because you're like, I have an ally. When they start talking, you gotta stop, because it's gonna be hard for other people to hear their names. The moderator's gonna get frustrated, and guess what? It's always the same like four or five moderators at these gigs, always. And if they know that you're rude and cut them off or talk over them, they're gonna remember you and they're not gonna be nice to you and maybe they'll lose your headshot from time to time. I don't know what goes on behind closed doors. Which brings me to my next point. Be nice. Be nice always. Be kind. Be kind to the moderator. Be kind to people in the room. You never know when you're going to be working with someone next. Or you never know if non-neck girl sitting next to you, Miss Union, is going to be on Broadway before you. I had a girl the other day, I was just like looking in. It was a big call. Got seen, which was awesome, but it was before we knew if we were gonna be seen. And it sounded like they were kind of dwindling on the names and maybe calling new ones. Like they weren't calling numbers anymore, they were calling names, so I like hurried in just to like put my ear in. And this one girl like walks past me and I was, I think I just like said to myself like, oh, are they, I wonder if that was on Union. This girl comes up behind me, un, unannounced, unprovoked, unasked, didn't need your information, ma'am, thank you. She just goes, they're not done. There's still more equity to go so you can like relax for a little bit. If she had said it in a different tone, I'm sure I would have been like, thank you so much, Suzanne. That was so kind of you. But she was just like, no, equity is still being called peasant. I'm sorry, Suzanne. 
Were you here in my position two years ago? Don't come for me. Be nice. Don't be rude. Oh, also, next person to absolutely be nice to and not be rude to is your pianist, is your accompanist. You don't want to piss them off. You just don't. They are your ticket to a good audition. Doesn't mean it's always gonna go well. Sometimes the skills of a of an accompanist might not be up to par with other accompanists that you've worked with in the past. That's not their fault. They have a job to do. They're doing the best that they can. And guess what? You might not be the singer that they want to be playing with. Do your best when you give tempo. I don't recommend slamming your hand like on the piano. That's annoying. Their piano is an extension of them. Don't do that. I always like give tempo on my chest because it's me and my person. I haven't found a bad response with that yet. If I'm wrong, I'll let y'all know. So far, so good with that. And I'm not great at this, and this is something I need to get better at. Come in with better cuts and clean cuts of music. If there's a whole section of your music that you don't want them to play and you wanna skip measure 33 to measure 63, make that extremely clear. Maybe make a photocopy of it with like parts of the music covered up so they don't even see it because they're seeing hundreds if not thousands of sheets of paper that day and I've really never worked with a company that is like bad at sight reading but it can get really really difficult especially if they're playing something really um, intricate like honestly like any story song that's like super contemporary is really hard because you're usually written in like really funky keys and have weird time signatures make it as easy for them as possible because you want them happy so that it can help you Sh like showcase your best self in the audition room. I was told once that I was rude to a companist. It wasn't because I was like, <laughs> play it was because I didn't know how to speak I think I was speaking in a way that was like making them feel stupid and like speaking down to them which was never my intention and then when someone brought that to my attention I was like okay reevaluate reevaluate how do I speak when I go up to them they're a fellow musician with me so I'm just like yeah I'm gonna play that I'm gonna sing this today you know chat it up with them for like a hot second recently I've had younger accompanists so they've been really chill and really nice like I, I haven't had like anyone grumpy or anything like that yet Luckily, have patience be as clear as possible without speaking down to them remember they're your fellow artists they're your fellow musician treat them as such treat them as a peer and with respect because when you don't everybody in the casting room sees it and guess what you don't get that job be nice to people be nice to people always be nice to people you never know you're gonna see them again and someone's rude to you and you're like or they say something really nasty like what that girl said Peasant. just like Take it on the chest, is that what that phrase is? Brush your shoulder off. You don't know, also, we don't know what's going on in everybody else's lives. The catastrophes happening in their life. This might be the worst day of their life. Be the bigger person, make a video about it later. <laughs> I don't know if this is particularly rude of me to say, but um, maybe don't bring smelly food into the holding room where everybody's waiting. Just leave, like any, like seafood, like, Leave that shit at home. I'm not saying eat rabbit food and and don't and only or only eat a sandwich or granola bars, but like have respect for the people that have been sitting in there all day and there's like a lot of body heat and you might be in one of these holding rooms that don't have any windows and like can't bring any air in and it's hot and people are stressed. Don't add to that by bringing smelly food. Like just have respect for people around you. I just find that to be rude because people are like trying to prepare for something or have been waiting for hours and just want to be seen. Just be considerate of that. It's like having too much perfume on. You know, not wearing deodorant. It's just have respect for other people and their scent because that can make people feel really really ill, get a headache, uh, have a migraine. I get it, everybody's got to eat. Go outside in the hallway and eat it where there's more air circulating and not as much hormones and stress circulating and tears forming. Also with that respect to the fact that it's not always going to be a lot of space. If you get there early, I've done this before where I've kind of spread out to two chairs and I've made myself comfortable, but then once more and more people start coming in, like I consolidate all my stuff to like right in front of me. And if you do that, hopefully other people will Respect the fact that you're doing that and not touch your shit. Don't touch other people's stuff. Don't do it. It. I get that. I get like that burlesque moment, like when she's like, "Don't touch my stuff." <gasps> like, don't touch my stuff. Don't touch my stuff. I don't like it when people move my bag. I don't like it when people um, move stuff off of a chair so that they can sit there. Like, don't do that. 
Don't move other people's stuff. Just don't do it. You wouldn't do it in any other setting in life. Don't do it at an audition room because you think you're entitled to have their seat. First come, first serve. Same with outlets. First come, first serve. You get an outlet, you got an outlet. I mean, don't be an, a jerk. Once all your stuff is charged and your hair is done, open up the outlet to somebody else. But like, don't move other people's stuff. People don't appreciate it and that stuff is gonna come back and bite you in the ass, I'm telling you. Cause I remember that stuff. All right, I'm gonna go to some things that people said on Instagram, which I thought were really funny. My friend Lindsay said, she gave me two. She said, don't be loud is one of those, part one. It goes on with like, don't over speak the moderator, but also if you're with a big group of friends, like don't be obnoxious. Other people are there to work. They're trying to concentrate. They're trying to read. They're trying to tune out everybody else. When you're like, oh my God, I love that production of Pippin. I had so much fun. You really slayed it, girl. Thanks, girl. Oh my gosh. I just loved it. Shut up. Just chill out. Just be a real human. Me, to me, that's not real human interaction. I had a great conversation with my friend Becca at an audition. We were just talking about like fitness and different workouts to do, showing each other different fitness moves, but like we consolidated it to our little space. And like we laughed a little bit and then we like would bring it down whenever somebody else around us was like trying to have a conversation. Just remember, it's like in kindergarten. When one group of friends talks loud, another group of friends is gonna talk loud so that they can hear each other. And then it's just gonna build and build and build. And then it's just gonna be like so much overstimulation. If you're just trying to sit there and listen to your podcast, don't warm up so loudly in the room. If you got a belt box and that's not doing it for you, get yourself a belt box. Hashtag gifted. Check out my video on how to uh, use a belt box. If, if you don't have that, even if you do have that, go to a place where there's not as many people. Don't warm up so loud in the audition room. I think it's fine to do a couple like, a couple trills, a couple of sighs, but don't do a full siren. Don't do a full-on warm-up. Don't do a full belt warm-up. Number one, you'll get in trouble for it because they don't want to hear that at Pearl. Number two, most of the time when you need that, go buy, buy an audition room. Buy a rehearsal room for 20 minutes, half an hour. You know, like, everybody's got to warm up. But if you need a full-on warm-up where you need to, like, really sing through what you're going to sing through, then make the effort and go buy a room because that's why they're there. And they're not that expensive. It helps you be considerate. To others. When you go into an audition room and you feel like you're, some people do it because they actually are, or some people say because they're not prepared, don't tell the people behind the, behind the casting table that you're sick. Don't do it. It's such a pet peeve of people, because it, number one, it just sets you up for failure, and it just sets you up for like negative energy. Unless you look physically ill, people are going to think you're just saying it to get away with the fact that you might suck. Sorry, it's the truth. If you feel really, really sick, Maybe don't go to the audition. Auditions are always gonna be there. And it's also like people behind the desk are like, ew, what is she sick with? Did she have a cold? Did she have the flu? Am I gonna get sick? It sets you up for failure. So why don't do that to yourself. Well said, Lindsay. Always be kind. You don't have to like everyone, but just be kind. Thank everyone, even if you think they're nobody, they might be somebody. So true. Sometimes I think that like moderators or readers or accompanists or anyone probably gets sick of hearing thank you so many times. They don't. Always say thank you. These are just simple human things that uh, super apply in an audition setting. It's just being a good human. Just, just be human. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears, bitch. Please subscribe to this channel. Please give this video a thumbs up. Please hit that bell notification. And please go over here and check out these other videos. That's all I have to say. Happy auditioning. Don't be a jerk. Because the worst thing that can happen is that you don't get a job because people don't want to work with you because of rudeness. That's the worst. That's how I feel about it.